New and surprising details are surfacing about the YouTube shooting. And there are still questions about whether police were actually warned the shooter was looking to unleash the kind of violence we saw yesterday in San Bruno. We have live team coverage. CBS 2's Carl Finstrom is live in Menifee at the family home of the shooter. But we begin with Sandra Mitchell live in our newsroom with what we have just learned. Sandra. Jeff, police say Nassim Agdam visited a shooting range yesterday morning, and that was just a few hours before the attack. They did find a Smith & Wesson 9mm handgun registered in her name at the scene. The crime scene investigators worked all through the night last night. They're collecting evidence on the campus of YouTube there in San Bruno. Police say Agdam shot three people before she killed herself. Agdam's family couldn't find her for a few days, and then on Monday they did file a missing persons report. And then early yesterday morning, Mountain View police found Agdam sleeping in her car. They say she was cooperative, and they really didn't find any reason to detain her, but they did notify her family. About an hour later, a second phone call, and the family told police that she was upset with YouTube, and that might be why she was in that area. But police, again, say at the time there was no reason for concern. Mountain View Police just released a, a statement a little while ago saying at no point did her father or brother mention anything about potential acts of violence or a possibility of Ugdom lashing out as a result of her issues with her videos. This morning, the San Bruno police chief said his department didn't hear from Mountain View Police. Because I don't know what was relayed to the Mountain View Police Department. We did not have communication with them prior to this incident. Are you going to be looking Sure, absolutely. We're going to follow every lead that we receive. Police say Ogden parked her car in the back of a neighboring business near the campus, and then she was able to get onto the YouTube campus through a parking garage. Again, she shot three people. Two of them now have been released from the hospital. They're doing much better. Sharon Jeff, no evidence either that she knew any of the victims. Okay. Sandy, right. thank you. All right, family members say that they knew that the shooter was upset with YouTube, but they had no idea she was capable of this kind of violence. In fact, her family says they didn't even know she had a gun. CBS 2's Cara Finstrom continues our team coverage, and she is live at the family's home in Menifee, where there apparently is a lot of activity there. Cara? Yes, yeah, Sharon, there has been a big crowd out here all morning long. Uh, just behind us, that is the family's home, and we watched an ATF agent uh, go inside just a couple moments ago. We've learned that federal agents are now searching all homes where she had lived. We've also been watching family members come and go. She was a good girl. Yeah. An aunt of Nassim Ogdom spoke this morning. She says the woman now suspected of wounding three people at YouTube's headquarters and then killing herself had been kind and loving to her. Feeling so bad. Yeah, I'm feeling down. Well, I'm feeling so sad for her. This morning, a man who called himself family carried food into the Menifee home, which belongs to Nassim Ogdom's father. ATF investigators have also been inside the home all morning and are searching her grandmother's home in San Diego. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube. And I'm not the only one. Agdam had complained about YouTube's policies online. She made her living creating videos for her YouTube channels. Most of her posts championed animal rights and veganism, but she also made music and exercise videos. Agdam had more than 10,000 subscribers, but all of her YouTube channels have now been taken down. On her personal website, she claimed YouTube cut her following and income by applying age restrictions to some of her videos, like this workout. I contacted support team. And they also said the same thing. There are some inappropriate things in your video. Here in Menifee, Agdam's father opened the door last night but did not want to go on camera. He said the family reported Agdam missing Monday when she didn't answer her phone for two days. Her brother, who asked us not to share his identity, says his family's concerns grew when officers found his sister up near Mountain View and just 30 minutes away from YouTube's headquarters. I didn't know she has a gun. And then I thought maybe she's going to go and start the fight or something. But he adds he never imagined she was capable of the violence that followed. Now, another woman went into that home just a short while ago. She said that she was uh, some type of relative, we believe, as well. Um, wouldn't give us any exact uh, description as to what her relationship may have been to Ogden. But Jeff, uh, Sharon, she said that Ogden had been a refugee and that she, too, was shocked by all the violence yesterday.